this lesson, we're going to discuss about program development process. So this is our lesson 2, part 1. You might think that programming simply involves typing words and numbers into a computer. Actually, this activity is called coding, wherein just refers to a small part of the whole programming process. Programming also called software engineering. Software engineering is a multi-step process for creating a program. Programming is also a method of solving a problem. Programming uses algorithms. Algorithms is a set of ordered steps for solving a problem, in which algorithm synonyms with logic. Analytical and critical thinking is needed in the formulation of solutions to a problem. Regardless of the programming language used, this activity proceeds through a set of well-defined stages during the development of the program. Sa figure na ito, nakikita natin ang program development process. First step is program analysis. Second step is program design. Third step is program coding. Fourth step is program testing and debugging. At ang last ay ang program documentation and maintenance. Pero dahil tayo ay nasa computer programming one pa lamang, or yung pinaka-basic sa programming, hindi natin sasakupin ang ika-fifth na step. So hanggang program testing and debugging lamang po tayo. For this lesson, i-discuss natin ang program analysis and program design. The first step in program development process is the problem analysis. Sa problem analysis, meron ulit tayong mga steps na dapat sundan. First step is define the problem and the users. Second step is determine the desired outputs. Third step, determine the desired inputs. Fourth step, determine the desired processing. Fifth, double check the feasibility of implementing the program. And the last is document the analysis. Sa mga susunod na slides, didiscuss po natin ito lahat. The second step in program development process is the program design. The program design, we will describe the algorithm for the solution of the problem. Specify what actions and operations a program will take. So sa paggawa ng algorithm, meron tayong tatlong tools. The IPO chart, to codes, and flowcharts. But in this lesson, i-discuss lang po natin muna ang IPO chart and to codes. Once na na-analyze mo na ang problem, kailangan mo na ngayon i-design yung program gamit yung tatlong ito or mamili ka lamang ng isa para lamang ma-solve mo yung problem. Sa first algorithm natin, i-discuss po natin ang sudo code. So what is sudo code? Sudo is a Latin word. Sudo means fake. So pag sinabi natin sudo code, ibig sabihin ay fake code. Sudo code is an algorithm written in normal human language statements to describe the logic and processing flow. It contains such terms as if, then, or else. Now, how to write a sudo code? Before tayo gumawa ng sudo code, meron tayong mga tatandaan na words. Sa input, pwede natin gamitin ang word na read or get. Sa process, pwede natin gamitin ang word na calculate or compute. Sa output naman, pwede gamitin ang write, print, or display. Meron tayong machine problem 1 dito. Basahin natin. Write a program that will add the two input numbers from the user. Display the sum of the two numbers. Dito, i-apply na natin yung ating napag-aralan sa problem analysis. Take note, problem analysis is the first step in program development process. Ito yung pinaka-importante part ng problem ng program development process. So dito, sa unang step, kailangan mo munang ma-analyze yung problem. So by reading this machine problem, ano yung naiintindihan natin? Naiintindihan natin na kailangan natin gumawa ng program na mag-a-add sa two numbers naman kagaling sa user. Then, i-display natin yung sum ng dalawang numbers na yon. Ngayon naman, i-apply natin yung mga steps sa problem analysis. Nagawa na natin yung first step, which is to determine the problem, which is to display the sum. 
So, para makuha natin yung sum, we need the two input numbers from the user. The second step is determine the output. So, sa problem na ito, ano yung output? Pag sinabi natin output, ano yung gustong makita ni user sa screen niya na siya na magiging solution sa problem? So, dito, ang keyword is yung display. So, display natin yung sum. The second step is determine the output. So, after mo mag-analyze ng problem, kailangan mo nang i-determine yung output. Next step is determine the input. So, para makuha mo yung sum, ano yung mga kailangan mong inputs? Kailangan natin ng two input numbers. Ngayon, paano siya ilalagay sa input? Ilalagay lang natin x and y. So, ano ba itong x and y na to? At ano ba yung sum na yan? Yung x and y na yan at yung sum na yan ay tinatawag natin sa programming as variables. So, ano nga ba ang variables? Variables is a placeholder for values. Intindihin natin maigi. Sabi sa problem, two input numbers. Ngayon, kailangan mo ng placeholder para sa dalawang number na yon. Dahil dalawa yung numbers na yon, kailangan mo rin mag-reserve ng dalawang variables. Pwede mong pangalanan na x and y. So, later on, naalamin natin ano ba yung mga valid variable names. Okay, sa ngayon, gamitin muna natin yung x and y. x para sa first input number ni user, y para sa second input number ni user. So, sum is also a variable. Dito ilalagay yung sum ng two numbers natin. So, after mag-analyze ng problem, after determining the output, after determining the input, proceed na tayo sa process. Dito sa process, by using the inputs, yung x and y natin, paano natin i-display yung sum? Ano yung mga process o yung step na susundan natin? So, dito natin makikita yung process ng pag-add ng numbers hanggang sa pag-display ng sum. First process is get a value for x and y. So, take note yung keyword na get. Sa last na slide natin, Get is keyword ng input. Dahil sabi sa problem natin is two input numbers, gagamitin natin yung get. Get a value for x and y. Pwede mo rin gamitin yung keyword na read. Read a value for x and y. So dito sa x and y na to, dito na mapupunta yung input numbers ni user. Yung dalawang input numbers niya. So next, after makapag-input ng two numbers, anong gagawin natin? Second process is calculate the sum by adding the value of x and y. Calculate meaning co-compute natin. Pwede rin gamitin yung compute. Compute the sum by adding the value of x and y. Tama pa rin yun. Third step or yung last is display the value of sum. Dahil gusto ni user na i-display natin yung sum, at para makita niya yung value ng sum, kailangan natin siyang i-display. So, sa number 3, display the value of sum. Ano pa yung pwede ilagay? Print the value of sum. Write the value of sum. So, ganyan lang po kasimple ang gumawa ng IPO chart. IPO chart means input process output. Take note, IPO chart is considered an algorithm to solve a problem. Machine problem number 2. So, dito naman, sa problem na ito, wala po tayong input, meaning wala tayong uh, kukunin na value from the user. Yung mga value ng ating variables ay given na. Pag sinabing given na, nakalagay na sa mismong problem. So, basahin natin. Anna wants a program that will compute the tax of her house she bought for 800,000 pesos. The tax rate is 20%. Now, i-apply ulit natin yung ating program development process. First step is the problem analysis. By reading the machine problem number 2, ano yung naiintindihan natin? Naiintindihan natin na si Anna, gusto niya na gumawa tayo ng program na magko-compute sa tax ng kanyang bahay worth 800,000 
and ang tax rate is 20%. Second step, after determining the problem, let's determine now the output. So by reading the problem, ano yung output ng program? Take note guys, kung ano lamang yung gustong output ng program, yun lamang po ang display natin, wala nang iba. Ang output po ng ating problem is the tax. Kasi sabi dyan ay, Anna wants a program that will compute the tax of her house. Yun lamang po ang sinabi, kaya yung output lamang po natin ay the tax, yung value ng tax. Next is input. So dito, bakit nakalagay pa rin yung input? Given man yung value or hindi, Ilalagay pa rin natin sa input yung mga variables para makuha natin yung output. So, sa problem na ito, ano yung mga input natin? Ano yung kailangan natin para ma-display yung tax? Or para ma-compute yung tax? Ang kailangan natin ay dalawang variables. So, dito may variable x tayo. Yung variable na x is gagamitin natin para i-assign natin yung 800,000 na presyo ng bahay. Sa paggawa pala ng program, guys, alalahanin nyo kung ano yung gamit ng mga variables, lalo na pag nasa coding na tayo. So, dito, kagabitin natin yung variable x as variable na mag-hold sa value ng 800,000. Next variable natin to compute the tax is the rate. So, rate is equal to 0.20. Paano naging 0.20? Take note, 20%. Paano makukuha yung 20% na yan? Ilalagay ba natin yung 20% mismo sa input? Hindi po yan babasahin ng ating programming languages. So, kailangan natin siyang i-convert into decimal number. So, 20% is 0.20. So, paano naging 0.20? 20 divided by 100 lamang. Yun lamang po ang formula para makuha natin yung rate ng ating problem. So, 20 divided by 100 is 0 0.20. Next is, what is the process? So, using this x and rate variables na to, paano natin co-compute yung tax? Or paano siya kukunin? So, yung process natin is, ito lamang. Calculate the tax, which is the 800,000. Ano? Calculate the tax by multiplying x to rate. Meaning, calculate the tax by multiplying 800,000 to 0 0.20. And the last process is display the value of tax. Kung napapansin nyo, meron bang kulang sa ating process? Like, unlike yung machine problem number 1 kanina, ma'am, asan na po yung get or read? Take note dito sa problem na to is given na po yung value, meaning, hindi na natin kailangang kumuha ng value from the user. Nakalang natin yung ilalagay kapag walang value yung mga variables natin. So, kapag given na yung value sa ating problem, diretso na tayo sa calculate or computation. So, this is our input process output chart for machine problem number 2. Machine problem number 3. So, if continue, i-modify natin yung ating machine problem 2. So, basahin natin yung problem. Anna wants a program that will compute the total payment of her house she bought for 800,000 pesos, including its tax. The tax rate is 20%. So, napapansin nyo, kamukha niya yung machine problem number 2. Pero ano lang ba yung pagkakaiba? Okay? So, ya-assume na natin na na-analyze na natin yung problem. So, proceed na po tayo sa second step, which is to determine the output. So, based from this machine problem, ano yung output natin? Or ano yung output ng ating program? The output is total payment. So, bakit total payment? So, ulitin natin basahin. Anna wants a program that will compute the total payment of her house. So, doon pa lang, unang basa pa lang, alam na natin na yung total payment lang ang kailangan nating i-compute. Including its tax, then the tax rate is 20%. So, 
So, determine na natin yung output. Next is, determine the input. So, para ma-compute natin yung total payment, ano yung mga kailangan natin input? So, the input is 800,000. Ia-assign natin yan kay variable x. Then, 0 0.20 para sa 20%. Ia-assign naman natin yan kay variable rate. Now, by using the inputs natin, paano ni ko-compute yung total payment? So, process tayo. First process is, kailangan mo i-compute muna yung tax. So, calculate the tax by multiplying x to rate. Take note, yung x and rate dito, meron silang value. Ito yung nasa input natin. Okay, nasa input part ng ating ito chart. So, merong 800,000 para sa x and 0 0.20 para sa rate. Next step is calculate the total payment by adding x to tax. Kung nakikita nyo sa process number 2, kailangan na natin yung value ng tax. So, dapat natin unahin ay compute yung value ng tax before we add yung tax sa total payment. So, pag kinompute natin yung tax, 800,000 times 0 0.20 is 150,000. So, yung value na po ng tax na yun is 160,000. Yun na po yung value ni tax sa process number 1. Process number 2 is Calculate the total payment by adding x to tax. Take note, x is 800,000. Then, tax is 160,000. So, kailangan natin siyang i-add. Third step is display now the total payment kasi yun yung gustong output ng ating program. So, display the total payment. So, yung value ng ating total payment is 960,000 salt in all. So, yan po yung Babayaran ni Ana para sa kanyang bahay. Total payment dito sa output is considered as variable. So, yung sagot natin na 960,000, yun yung magiging value ni total payment. Balik tayo sa ating topic na sudukod. So, bakit natin inuna ang IPO chart? Inuna natin yung IPO chart kasi sa IPO chart, dun mo na makikita yung mismong sudukod. Balikan natin yung ating machine problem 1. So, makita natin yung pseudocode ay yung mismong process. Okay, yung sa ating IPO chart, yung mismong part ng process. Yun na po yung tinatawag nating pseudocode. Machine problem number 2. So, ano naman yung pseudocode ng ating machine problem number 2? Take note sa problem na ito, is given na yung value. Meaning, wala na tayong kukunin na value from the user. Input process output ng ating machine problem 2 is yung nasa upper part. Next is, gawan natin ngayon ng pseudocode. Tignan natin kung meron bang magbabago. Sa paggawa kasi ng pseudocode, kung given yung value sa problem, kailangan ding ilagay mo yung value sa mismong pseudocode. So, siya yung magiging first process. So, the value of x is 800,000. The value of rate is 0 0.20. So, take note, ilalagay mo lamang ito kung given yung value sa problem. Pero kung yung value ng x and rate is ibibigay ni user, ang kapalit nito ay get the value of x and rate. So, yun yung magiging process natin kapag input yung x and rate. Pero dahil given siya, or nasa problem na yung value, ito na yung magiging process natin. The value of x is 800,000 and the value of rate is 0. is 0 0.20. Then, yung second step or process to port is same na po sa process natin sa ating IPO chart. So, kung titignan natin, yung na-underline lamang po dito ay yun lamang ang ating dinagdag. Ganito ang gagawin kapag given yung value sa ating problem. Machine problem number 3. So, tignan naman natin yung pseudocode ng ating machine problem number 3. Take note sa problem na ito, given ulit yung value na 800,000 and 0 0.20. Kapag kakaiba lang ito sa machine problem number 2 ay, sa machine problem number 2, tax lang yung kinukuha. Sa output naman ng machine problem number 3, yung total payment ang kukunin natin. So, from IPO chart, yung upper part natin, 
Yan po ay po chart ng ating machine problem number 3. So, tingnan natin kung may, magbabab may magbabago ba sa todo code. So, sa baba, yung na-underlinean, yun ito po yung ating dinagdag. So, dahil given yung value, so, ilalagay natin the value of x is 800,000 and the value of rate is 0.20. So, kapag kinuha mo yung todo code ng machine problem number 3, itong part na ito lamang, itong part na ito lamang ang kukunin mo or isusulat mo kapag tinanong ka kung anong yung sudo code ng ating problem. Diyan po nagtatapos ang ating topic about sudo code. Pero nakita naman natin sa paggawa ng sudo code, ang dami pa nating dapat na malaman. Tulad na lamang ng program development process, yung problem analysis natin, then yung mga algorithm and variables, pati na rin yung IPO chart. Lahat yun i-consider natin para makagawa ng sudo code. So kung Kung medyo hindi mo naiintindihan yung topic, pwede mong panoorin ulit para lalo mo siyang maintindihan. So, pwede naman pong paulit-ulit ang panonood, di po ba? Yung ating mga machine problem na nabanggit sa lesson na ito ay gagamitin natin sa ating part 2 sa lesson din na ito. So, which is the flowcharting. So, see you on or see you on next lesson. Thank you.